this YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. Let's spend a little time talking about the different types of telescopes. Let's start with what Galileo built. Now Galileo doesn't invent the telescope, but he's among the first people to make use of what he called his spyglass. As we discussed in class, he made his own telescopes from scratch, which is quite a lot of work. Galileo made use of what we would call a refracting telescope. The word refracting means literally to bend light, to refract, to bend light. And what better way to do that is with the use of lenses, just like the lenses in a contact lens or a pair of glasses. The refracting telescope uses a lens that is thicker in the center and thinner at the edges. We call that a convex lens. The light passes through the original lens, that's called the objective. So this lens, which is convex, has an objective portion to it. The light comes through, and what happens? The light is bent. Now think about any time you've ever seen a lens that's thicker at the center and thinner at the edges. What does that do? It's like a magnifying glass. It takes the light and it focuses it to a point. Imagine a magnifying glass in sunlight. You can adjust the height of that uh, lens and you can create a laser beam of light on the ground. Don't tell me many of you don't remember doing that when you were a kid. We'll leave out what you did with it, potentially. So you take that lens and you create that laser beam of light. That's exactly what a refracting lens does. It takes, the lens, it takes the light and it bends it, it refracts it, down to a point. Now is that a good telescope? Heck no. You've taken all the light that's coming in, maybe a galaxy, maybe stars, whatever, and you've compressed it to a point. So what we do is we let the light pass through that point, and now the light is diverging, it's spreading out. We stick another convex lens here called the eyepiece, and that light is then what? It's refracted again. Light that is coming in straight is bent in. Light that is now spreading out is straightened down. And so you're ending like this. Notice the light, notice the symmetry here. The same deal, bent in, bent in. As it's spreading out, boom, it straightens out. So this is where you put your eye. Certainly not to look at things like the sun, but to take this much light and bring it down to your eye. That's a simple refracting telescope. Now, Galileo didn't have access to good mirrors. If he had, he might have used designs that were perfected in the next century. Galileo was building his telescope around 1610. It wasn't until the late 16, early 1700s when better mirrors were built. And they were able to build telescopes that work for a mirrored variety. These are called reflecting telescopes. Again, we take a mirror. It is concave. This is the primary mirror. It's concave, not convex. The light comes into this concave mirror. If the mirror were flat, it would reflect back out. But in fact, it's bent in. So the light bends in to a point, just like we had here. That point wouldn't be all that useful. So instead, we've got to let the light do something else so we can handle on it. We've got another problem here, too, because this is a mirror. If we were to try to look at this, we'd have to stick our head in front of the mirror. We'd block the light. So astronomers recognized that they had to take the light and put it somewhere else. Isaac Newton designed a telescope where he took a secondary mirror and he placed it right here. A small secondary mirror. The light reflects off the secondary mirror out the side of the telescope where you put an eyepiece to clean it up and you've got yourself what's called a Newtonian reflector. You say, well, wait a minute. We're blocking a little bit of light that hit the primary mirror. Yeah. Nothing you can do about that. But quite honestly, the secondary mirror is so small, you're not losing much. So we've got ourselves a Newtonian reflector for looking in the side of the telescope. And there was another design, which was put together a little bit later, but is very common. In fact, the most common type of design for any big telescopes around the world. And that is, you stick a secondary mirror here, 
and you shoot the light out the back of the telescope and put your eyepiece there. This is called a Cassegrain reflector. So there are two predominant types of reflecting telescopes. The Newtonian when you're looking out the side and the Cassegrain when you look through the back. Either way, you're using a number of mirrors to bring the light to your eye. So which is better? When I was a kid, my first telescope was a Newtonian. They tend to be a little bit less expensive and easier to build and buy. The cast grain, though, are the ones that you would typically have looked through. So if you've ever looked through a telescope and looked through the side of a telescope, it's been a Newtonian. If you look through the back and you were using mirrors rather than lenses, you were looking through a cast grain telescope. All the world's giant telescopes, and I've visited quite a few. One's in Kitt Peak in, in Arizona, one's in Hawaii. Uh, telescopes around the world are all cast grain reflectors. Why? It's just practical. Okay? Reality is you don't spend a lot of time looking for telescopes. You put instruments, big instrument packages, packages that have been engineered. They're big, they're big things, and they're not easy to stick on the side of a telescope. It's rather ungainly as you try to track the object as it moves across the sky. So just putting a big uh, gizmo on the back of a telescope is a lot easier than putting it on the side. For that reason and no other reason. The Cassegrain reflector is really the predominant type of reflector built around the world. Some of the largest telescopes that, that are as big as 10 meters in diameter uh, 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 for their primary mirror, 10 meters, that's 30 feet across, uh, use uh, uh, a Cassegrain variety. The question is, uh, so why do we build big telescopes? And where do we put them when we build them? We'll talk about that next.